to CAP Organising Committee. It's my pleasure to welcome Matt Ditton to the, uh, the Redlands Theatre. Um, Matt has been making games in Brisbane for about nine years and he's been th uh, through almost every part of the art team. So he's been a character modeler, level modeler, lead artist, asset manager and technical artist. He's currently working at Pandemic and is about to become the principal technical artist on Team Alpha. These days he concentrates his efforts on the data side of art and games, focusing on the art tools and pipeline integration. To this end, his exporter and pipeline tools are finding fans across the seas at Pandemic LA. This year Matt has been working part-time for the QCA, Queensland College of Art, in the new Bachelor of Games Design. This, year long, this year's long foundation subject in programming for artists forms the basis of his talk today on why artists in games should learn code. Hand it over to you, Matt. Of course. Oh, it's a, that's a game. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. Um, you good? Okay, so uh, my name's Matt Ditton, and today I'm going to be talking about teaching artists to code. Okay, so just as a brief intro, um, uh, I've been around for a little while. There's a few people in the audience that already know me. Hi, front row. Um, <laughs> um, I've done a bunch of stuff, uh, but at the moment I'm uh, the technical artist at uh, Team Alpha, well, on Team Alpha at Pandemic Oz. And uh, today the talk's on programming and artists. Okay, and very specifically, the idea of getting artists to program. Uh, there is a disclaimer here, um, which you'll come to understand as I go through the talk. So, just to begin with, I'm going to ask the very typical presenter question, who does what? So, who's a developer? Feel free to raise your hands. Okay, who's a student? Hey guys. Artist? Programmer? Oh. Tech artist? Uh, hey guys, how you doing? Other. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of double hands going up. Fair enough. Okay. So, uh, there's two major reasons for this talk. And um, the first one is kind of like my mantra where uh, I'm going to talk about the benefit of people on the art team who know how to program, how that benefits the team, how that benefits your whole project. And also to introduce a programming package called Processing, uh, which we'll get. Okay, so I'm going to run it in three different parts. And there's kind of the uh, why, what, and how. So why should artists learn? What do they gain? What does the team gain? Uh, what should they be coding? Things they should code. And the all-important question, how do you actually teach it? Okay, so part one, why. There's a few of these. Okay, so... My fundamental is the idea of knowing your medium. So, to me, computer games is my artistic <coughs> medium. And I equate this back to the idea that many, many moons ago, artists had to make their own paint. The whole concept of making your own paint informed you of the building blocks of your medium. And that made you a better artist. You knew the limitations of what you could accomplish, you knew what happened when you mixed this and this, and you knew kind of the better way to get the results that you wanted. So, with exactly the same philosophy, shouldn't you know how your medium, computer games, work? Um, and number two, and this one's got a cute, sorry, ignorance will lead to misunderstanding. Okay, and I uh, have my illustration here. I teach this to all my first year students, so. So, uh, the role of artist will be played by circle, and the role of programmer will be played by square, <laughs> and I'll uh, highlight the fact that, you know, the artist has a lovely serif typeface and the programmer has a monospace font, which is quite attractive. And uh, the artist comes to the programmer and says, why doesn't it just work? And the programmer says, well, the problem equals pepcap. Well, you. <laughs> For the people who get that joke, I'm talking to the right crowd. Okay. Sorry, so, to explain the concept of ignorance. I want to talk about the word value, and this is a real-world sort of story. Value has uh, two specific meanings, two, the two different parts 
of our teams, programmers and artists. So in programming, the word value refers to a magnitude, uh, the quantity uh, of a number, and in fine art, it's the degree of lightness and brightness of a colour. Now, this is a true story. An artist and a programmer on my team, we were building a uh, material editor, and the programmer, we went through this lovely meeting, it was all good, the plan was great, we all walked away happy, looking forward to the bright future ahead. And uh, artist comes up to the programmer and says, this is great, but when we're dealing with the colour, you know, when we're changing this colour value, and when we're changing this colour, uh, I just want to be able to change the value. The programmer says, sure, what do you want me to do with it? <laughs> artist says, I just want to change the value. The programmer says, yeah, yeah, that's great, I can give that to you, where do you want me to put it? <laughs> and the conversation degenerated from there. <laughs> <laughs> The conversation went for half an hour, everybody uh, actually went for an hour, everybody left uh, hating one another, come back into work, the programmer comes up to me and goes, I don't know how the hell you work with that guy, he's a moron. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, artist comes up to me and says, that guy's a prick. <laughs> and go, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. So as designated uh, communication representative between art and programming, I explained the concept of the word value and we all had a good chuckle. So, so as the addendum to that concept is, uh, when we understand each other, we get awesome. And as a method of explaining awesome, <laughs> so when we all speak the same language, we're in a pretty happy place, and we can pull off some awesome moves. Okay, so specifically for the artists in the room, we can own the data. Now. A lot of people go, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Alright, everything that you make in games will end up being data. All you do every day is create. And uh, all parts of it, in the end, will get turned into data for the game. Now, right at that magic point when you hit export or you hit save or whatever, quite often this is a complete mystery of what happens next. And that mystery leads to problems. So the whole notion of owning data means that the art team becomes responsible for ensuring that everything they produce is clean, organized, and efficient. Uh, better data is actually a win for the entire <coughs> team. Everyone benefits. Programmers will spend less time fixing problems. Designers can get what they want. There's always a problem for designers. People can rely on everything working. Good data is less waste, and less waste means you can do more. And fundamentally, fundamental point of the whole thing, we can all make the game look better. And we can make the game run better. Okay. So, next point, we can own our tools. Okay. So, back to this original concept of painters mixing paint. And uh, it, I was reading this earlier, and I'm thinking maybe this, maybe this slide's a little harsh, but uh, I, I don't mean to come across harsh, but programmers simply do not make art. And they don't spend their whole days uh, working in, I was going to put XSI, but then I realized that we're all in the same boat now. Um, so, and the other problem is that they don't, they just frankly don't generate the volume of data that we generate. And uh, they've got their own problems. So why on earth would you want them making our, our art pipeline? So, I've got this uh, grand vision and uh, I kind of foam at the mouth a little, and eyes roll back, and I think it's wonderful. People kind of think I'm a bit nuts, but that's okay. I'll share it with you. So the ideal world is that there is an artist made and maintained pipeline. It's made by the team, and when it goes wrong, it's fixed by the team. And within that team, there is a point of contact for all matters that relate to getting your work in the game. And uh, whenever you have a problem, you know exactly who to talk to because the guy that you talked to was the guy that wrote the system and he probably sits right next to you. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back to how you actually make this ideal world in a minute. But, I'm going to tackle the uh, next part of the talk which is uh, 